Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be talking about doing some welding with a Hobart Iron Man 230 MIG welder setup. I've got some aluminum welding coming up, so I'm going to be doing uh, at least one video on uh, MIG welding with an aluminum spool gun. But first, I'm going to put this thing through some uh, some uh, riggers with just using steel. This is an open butt root on 3 8 and uh, here's some 11 gauge uh, inch and a half square tubing. There's some 16 gauge sheet metal outside corner joint and so I'll talk about a little bit more about that later but I really like the looks of this thing it's an Iron Man 230 like I said runs off 230 volt comes with the pre-drilled holes to, to uh, put hose reels on the side I found that pretty handy you always need a place to hang your gun your ground clamp or your spool gun it's got a good chart for the good starting point for settings for voltage and wire feed speed spool gun and MIG switch on the inside and a place to put consumables. A little tray to put your tips, drive rollers, uh, all that kind of stuff. Here's the drive roller mechanism. Pretty heavy duty little assembly here, cast aluminum. And I'm going to hook up the MIG gun now and you see this little double o-ring assembly with the ports in there. Very important to get that thing seated, uh, mashed all the way in there so that those double o-rings seal off the argon or the uh, shielding gas port uh, so you get adequate shielding gas and no leaks. Alright, here's the uh, ground clamp. That's the electrode with the red. Electrode positive is the way to go for bare wire and for aluminum, but not always. Uh, sometimes flux core needs uh, uh, electrode negative, so remember that. Also, when you're hooking your ground clamp up, remember this is a copper connector uh, to a copper I mean to an aluminum tab on the wire. Don't put a washer between there. You want a good connection between aluminum and copper. Those are better con uh, conductors than any kind of galvanized washer or anything you might use. So I'm going to hook up a spool of uh, E70S6035 wire. Uh, also 0.9 millimeter it's called. And uh, for our friends in Australia and New Zealand and other parts of the world that are on the old metric system. But anyway, I'm going to Put the little spool of 035 ER70S6 wire on here. Make sure I got it uh, plugged in right to the uh, little post that's on there. Now, when you're snipping wire like this, don't do this. Don't snip it, hold it on one end and snip it here. It'll uncoil like a snake with you. And that's no fun getting it tangled up like that. What you want to do is you want to grab it and make sure you're holding it on the side that it... Uh, where it might uncoil with you. So hold it on that side, even if you have to contort a little bit. There you go. And then you feed your uh, you feed your wire through the guide port there. And get it fed in through the through the liner. And you can actually feed your wire all the way through the end of your gun by hand like this if you're if you're patient and you want to do it. I like to feed it a good ways up in there and then go ahead and do it with the motor. You want to make sure you have your drive rollers facing the right way. These, these are uh, dual groove drive rolls and so I'm using 035 wire and, I, and that's the side I want out so I make sure I got the right size right diameter groove for the right size wire. I got a little spring loaded uh, dealies on there to make it really easy to pop them in and out. You also want to check your drive roller alignment. If that's out of alignment, it'll it'll wear out your drive roller grooves and uh, you, it'll you'll notice it in the arc sometimes. Okay, so got that done. Now there's a little tensioner on here. It's kind of like an anti-backlash on a bait casting reel for you fishermen out there. Just basically, if you got that wire feed speed cranked up pretty fast, the, the spool, you know, the inertia on the spool will make it keep spinning sometimes and make you, you know, get a little backlash. So you want to have it at least tight enough that, uh, that it doesn't keep rolling when you stop and start and stop and start hitting the trigger. This one comes with a little, almost like a dryer plug and just so happens that's what I had. So just to get started with the settings, I did a little quick check here on the chart. I'm using 7525 gas mixture, so I'm going to look here at steel, ER70S6, 
and uh, it says set polarity for DCEP, that's reverse polarity. I gotta find the correct gas here, correct wire diameter, and then come over to whatever thickness I'm welding, and then it'll give me uh, it'll give me some good settings. It'll give me a voltage setting and a wire feed setting. This is the wire feed setting that's just a dial number on the dial, not inches per minute. But if I'm welding quarter inch, I'm at six and forty-four. Uh, you know, six on the voltage and 44 on the wire feed speed, so it's pretty simple. Now, whatever that correlates to inches per minute uh, doesn't really doesn't really matter, but you can figure that out just by using a stopwatch and a, and a uh, tape measure. It's not that that wire chart is not going to give you settings for doing some, you know, like an open butt root pass like that. It's just a starting point. Another way of doing it is uh, you can download the Miller app the uh, welding weld calculator app for uh, for iPhone and I'm not sure what other phones they have it available for but basically you know when you open this thing up you got a choice of MIG solid or flux core and stick uh, or TIG so I'm using MIG solid wire and then it takes me to this page and then I select the metal type I tap that and I want to select steel and then I'll select the thickness and let's say today I am welding uh, 3 16 thickness, uh, thick metal, and then I click on our touch tap get settings, and there I go. For short circuit transfer, 035 wire or 0.9 millimeter, 320 to 340 inches a minute. Now I have found that that is a little high for me. That is max, that's for production, that's for you know a horizontal or flat weld, and for really smoking, and that's like max wire feed speed. I always trim it back from there, especially for open butt joints. There's also a lot of other information as far as the uh, you know the voltage and the shielding, gas uh, recommendations and amperage range and and uh, filler metal type and some other notes. It's a handy little tool. It's basically identical to what's on the MillerWelds.com website under uh, the uh, under resources and improving your skills. And there's a weld calculator on there, but this is a handy thing to have in your pocket if you got a a smartphone that will handle it. Like for instance, the wire feed speed, if you, you know, this is an open butt route, that's too much wire feed speed. So, but it does give you a place to start. And like I started there, but then I trimmed it back to here. And much better, much smoother. The puddle's not quivering, the wire's not stubbing in the puddle and shooting through the puddle and all that kind of stuff. So, this is a really good starting place. It's not the ending place. The way to find your sweet spot is just by, uh, you know, starting here and then and then uh, taking some notes and going from there. It's also one other really handy thing on this little chart. It's actually got part numbers of consumables and drive rollers and some other notes. And so, uh, if you need to order parts, you don't have to look it up. It's just right there. The Iron Man 230's got a click type uh, voltage setting. Uh, some people might not like that. They want an infinite adjustment, but I found it's pretty just simple. And uh, I don't really usually don't need that much precise adjustment on the voltage where I need it is on the wire feed. This is made in USA, and uh, it's, uh, it's a good-looking little unit. So I'm going to turn it on here. I've got it plugged in, powered up. Last thing I'm going to do is plug the uh, little uh, control plug for the... Uh, trigger in here. I got that done and I am pretty much ready to rock and roll. Except I want to purge it out. I want to purge the line out and make sure I've got the lines full of shielding gas. Now I don't want to run a bunch of wire out there. After I get the wire run through it here and get the wire uh, coming out the tip, uh, then I want to just purge it. It would probably be a good idea if I was just purging it while I was uh, running the wire through, but I'm not that smart so you know I've got to do it again. But well, I got the wire up there now. I grab a tip from the uh, consumable tray there. Screw the tip on. Get it good and snug. Put the nozzle on. And one thing I like about this, I was pleasantly surprised. I like my nozzle, my contact tip, and my nozzle to be about flush or even slightly protruding most of the time. And that's what this one is. Just barely sticking out there. So I was kind of happy to see that. I don't have to do any finagling. So that's done. Then I want to set my uh, turn my shielding gas. This is 7525 argon CO2. 
Turn my shielding gas on, open it all the way, back seat the valve, and then set the uh, flow meter here to uh, 20 to 25. And now I want to purge, like I said, purge the, uh, the, the line out. I could have done that while I was feeding wire, but just didn't think about it. But because I don't want to waste a bunch of wire, I just uh, loosen the trigger and then purge it out that way. So, ready to rock and roll now. Now, the ground clamp. You've heard me harp on ground clamps a lot. It's very important to have a good ground when you're MIG welding. This one is a pretty good one. It's got actually a brass jaw with dimples on it. That'll make you a, good, a bunch of good contact points and uh, do a better job on, uh, on grounding than most others. And grounding is very important with MIG because the wire is going to keep coming out whether you lose your ground momentarily or not. And that's where a lot of people, uh, you know, you get that stubbing and everything and you, you want to set your machine different when all it is is you're, you have a bad ground. So happy to see it's got a decent ground clamp on it. All right, again, this is an inch and a half, 11-gauge uh, tubing. And so after monkeying around just for a couple of minutes, I found a pretty good setting. It's pretty smooth, very little spatter, and uh, gave me a decent-looking well. Here's another close-up going the other direction. Very pleased with, uh, with what I got so far. I'm still working on finding the, the real fine tuning and getting the real sweet spot on this machine, but uh, so far so good. Now, uh, this is 16 gauge hot rolled here. This is some, just a project I never did finish. It's uh, tacked with stick and it's 16 gauge and uh, it's plasma cut. Not all that clean, but uh, did a good job on that too. The 035 wire is not ideal probably for 16 gauge, but definitely doable. Here I turned it down just a little bit, both voltage and wire feed speed, and uh, just making a little loops to, to uh, melt those corners off, go just a little bit slower, and that works that worked just fine as well. I would always recommend running downhill if you can on stuff that thin. It always helps. Here's some 11 gauge, 8 inch thick uh, uh, steel. kind of hear the arc is pretty smooth on this. Did a good job on that. And the toughest uh, toughest thing I put it through was this 3 8 plate uh, open open butt groove weld. It's got about a 3 32nd uh, gap in it, about a 16th land. I'm, uh, I'm in there really close with the camera here. But um, so you, that's for your benefit so you can see what's going on. That's a smooth arc. When you can get a machine uh, tuned smooth enough to uh, run an open butt like this and not shoot through and everything, that, that's a pretty good sign that you've got a, a pretty sweet arc. There's the back side of it just to give you an idea of how it penetrated through. Well, that's all for today. We got steel done. We put it through its paces on a, you know, a few different joints. There's the front side of the root. And uh, coming soon will be that spool gun with aluminum. And uh, looking forward to that. So thanks for watching. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.